next guest waiting inside the studio with us because him, an advocate for child protection, you're going to need to make welcome in our midst right now. We get Olakunle Peter in the building. Good morning, Olakunle. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm fine. Now, seeing that video and looking at the seriousness and the severity because we were talk just before we we'll start the interview of how Lagos State don't put certain laws on ground. But it can't be like, say, those laws, you just did it for decoration. It can't be like, say, those laws, nobody did for the road to actually implement them. Now, looking at hawking, child hawking, we know, say, for Lagos State here, a lot of people, a lot of children, we they see them for streets, especially even during school hours or even after school hours. And they did for highway, expressway, third mainland bridge. You go see that they hawk their daily bread. And you go to wonder where their mama did, where their papa did, where these children they don't turn them to breadwinners of the house. Tell us what it make you actually decide to be an advocate for child protection. Yes, um, you know, uh, the first thing for me is that um, the future that we're trying to build belongs to the, the children. You know, when we fail to give the needed uh, uh, skill, the needed development for our, to our children, we end up uh, having a society where children are not prepared for the future. Mm -hmm. So we, we need to ensure that if really we want our country to move forward, beyond where we are now, every children, I mean, I mean every child, must be part of the developmental process. So if you leave some children behind in the process of growth in a nation or in a continent, which is Africa, for example, we we'll end up having the same kind of problem all around us. So it's very, very important that we, we advocate for children. I think everybody is an advocate for a child. So, yes. All right, now looking at um, the situation of things, tell us the perception because you, you'd be person when they travel to other Francophone countries, neighboring countries, you've been to Ghana, you've been to Cote d'Ivoire, you've been to Togo and some other countries as well, including France. Uh, when you go to those countries, what be the mindset of the guardians of these children where they walk, whether not for farm they walk or, or not for street they walk or, what be the mindset? These people actually think, say, the, the children, they do the right thing. You see, most of those people, uh, in the real sense of it, some of them are illiterate. And uh, when you talk about child protection for them, it's like you, you are coming with a strange topic. So for them, Understanding the gravity of what they are, in, they are pushing their children to is, is, is a complex thing. Some of them don't even know that what they are doing to those children are not good. That is the reality. And when we talk about children moving from one country, from one uh, uh, state, from one village to another, you know, there is always this pull factor. There are places we call the origin, <coughs> the transit, and the destination. And when you look at the West African corridor here, Nigeria is more of a destination place. And part of what we always get, when you go to uh, Francophone countries around us, the Republic, Togo, and so, the perception is when you go to Nigeria, you are going to get a job, make some money, and come back. And most of these children are not looking for uh, 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 too much of money. They could be after money to buy a, a, tricycle, a motorcycle that they will use as uh, Okada when they go back to their country. They could be after money that they will use to send possibly their sisters to school. They could be after money to use to set themselves up for a business. So, and because the parents don't have the money, yes, we talk about poverty as one of the major reasons, but some of them are ignorance. So, it's not only poverty, they send those children away, even force them to go out. And the other side of it is parents collect money and ask the child to, you know, like a substitute for that money, then the child would go with the uh, uh, assume, presumed uh, benefactor, who is now uh, like a trafficker, for example, as far as I'm concerned, he's a trafficker, who bring, take the child to his, his uh, destination then make use of that child, possibly as a mate, and be collecting the money uh, because he has paid the parent. So he's collecting the money. So the child can work for the next four, three years, five years, 
then it will have nothing to show for it. And most of those things are happening in, in, you know, in places where you can't see. It's the one you see on the streets, hawking, is what we talk about. But the one that are happening, those that are happening inside enclosed places that we cannot see. So how, how many of us talk about those ones that are happening inside enclosed places? You go to uh, people's houses, you see maid working. They are not collecting. The salary is not being paid to the maid. It's being paid to somebody else. The maid is, is not having any, uh, any opportunity to go and learn a trade because it's, it's a maid. So or she's a maid. He has to do all the house chores from morning to night and everything. So he does that for how many years? Then at the end of the day, it's not developed. It doesn't have any skill. It's not a profession. Mm -hmm. So it could be a pathway to having a, a life for yourself. But when you're not giving that support in, in your destination, even from your origin, you have, been, you have been left alone, you got to your destination, the suffering continues. Then what happened to you when you grew up? So we'll continue to have a society where people, children grow up. Dysfunction. Di yeah, and they cannot function well in the society. Now, looking at um, Lagos State now, <clears throat> what do you feel, say, Lagos State is supposed to do? To make sure, say, these children will be the leaders of tomorrow, come out from the street of the road. Yes. Um, you see, if you, if you ask me that kind of question, eh, for Lagos State here, when you look at Nigeria from all the 36 states where we get, now Lagos State will <coughs> be major, a uh, uh, major hub, destination point. Mm. And when you look at what in Lagos State they do, is Lagos State gets uh, child rights law. Lagos State get um, child safeguarding policy. But how many of those laws, policies, they actually work well and favor the children? Talk with that. You know, there's a difference between the laws and the implementation. You know, there are responsibility that comes with it when you do laws. There are responsibility that comes with it. A child that is uh, arrested on the road, for example, you arrest the child for hawking. Where do we take them to? You understand? Then what do we do to the parent? Are we going to take the, child, the parent to court, jail them <coughs> for allowing the child to hawk, or we retrieve the child from the parent? You understand? So Lagos State government has, they have um, uh, homes, shelters, but I want to believe that those shelters are, may not be enough. The people in the private sectors also support in putting up shelter. But children who are hawking, I think one thing they need to do, I know the law permits that, is we don't need to play with the life of those children. If a father cannot take care of his or her child, then the government or the people in the private sector should be given the authority and the right to take away that child from those parents and put them back to school so that they could learn, know how to read and write. Because I don't know the kind of generation we are going to have with people who cannot read, know, read and write. All right, now, so very quickly, because time to be our friend. Now, we know say some of these children or some of these teenagers, some of them genuinely, they actually try support. Not be say they be the breadwinner. Mm -hmm. They, they try support the small, small thing where their mama and papa they bring come. And some people, they, where, some adults, they, where they exploit these children where they take advantage of them. In fact, I hear say that they sell, that they rent ch children, those newborn babies, where you go see say, some mothers they carry for children. I hear say that they rent them for Lagos. How you fit, how we fit to differentiate those teenagers where they're of the legal age, where they try to support their family, and then how do we differentiate them from those ones where the adults they exploit? You know, uh, one of the processes you, you need to follow when you want to do that is to listen to the children. Because one thing about children generally is they, 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 don't tend, they tend not to lie like adults. If you, if you accost a child in that kind of situation and you make some, some kind of friendship with that child immediately at that point, you listen to him. You know, for example, you can provide an immediate need. You see a child who is hawking without a shoe and you buy a shoe for him or her, then as a social worker, you listen to the child. You understand that this child is actually, he will tell you that, yes, I've been hawking since morning, 7 a.m., 7 
and you saw the child at 5 p.m., you know that that child is being abused. That is child labor. Mm. But if a child tells you that, oh, no, uncle, you know, I've been working since when I came back from school. So my, I have to help my mother from maybe for the next two hours to do some hawk. I mean, to hawk a bit and make some money, support the mother. That, so we need to have the skills to listen first. Assumption sometimes does not work. You can listen, re-listen, and ask somebody else to listen. You can send another person to do the listening. So after listening, you'll be able to discover that, oh, this child is really being abused. This one is doing, is doing some house. Supporting, right? Yes, okay. supporting the parent. Beautiful. Now, I know some people out there will want to support this project where you do, and a lot of people, they're passionate about children, especially getting the children off the streets. Yes. The ones who need to go to school, they need to go to school. The ones, some people, even the way they actually gather new um, used items, like now we're not in our calendar year for a lot of children. People, the way they tell parents them or, or friends, say, if you get any used thing, we, you won't give out. We get children, we need this kind of thing. Uh, how people like that go feel rich? People want support the course where you go do, where they do. How they feel rich now? Yes, uh, for to reach us uh, as an organization, uh, Terezom, we we work from uh, our head office is in Lausanne, Switzerland. So okay. what we've been doing for the past two years and uh, going to three years now is is to strengthen system, child protection system uh, between Nigeria countries. and to Ivory Coast. Okay. So, so for social media, how people can actually reach us? Yes, you can, they can reach us on our Facebook page. That's uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Ted is on Migration West Africa. Migration in West, in West Africa. Africa. Okay, so for you Facebook. see Migration in West Africa okay. on Facebook. Okay. They, can see, they will see what we do on Facebook. Beautiful. And if they want to reach us also, you can... Uh, uh, on you social can media? Send on social media. Or you get email? Email, yes, you can, okay, you can email me on okay. Peter... Peter, P E T E R, yes, dot Olakunle, Olakunle, at T D H, T D H dot C H. Okay, T D H dot C H. But on top of Facebook, will be one of the easiest places where people feel easily waka go. And a migration in West Africa, and I mean the a particular word where you go type in, type in those three words, and of course, you go see the project and the contact information go there for you to reach out just in case you want to support this cause. We all need to come together to make sure say every child when they're supposed to be on top of the road. On top of the street or for inside farm, actually they for the right place. We're supposed to be their classrooms. Thank you so much Thank you. for coming. We wish you the very best on top of this project. Yes. To enjoy more of this our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.